Monochrome GT4 Australia Series first race of the year. Really looking forward to this category. These cars look great and they are exceptionally quick. Some of the drivers to look out for, and there's some great names in there like Brabham and Mediki. This, uh, is, what is there not to love about this category? Yeah, GT4, what a what a category. It's uh, got such a variety. The cars, as you mentioned, they look fantastic. There's so much variety, which I love, and um, I really can't wait to see these cars in action around this beautiful Phillip Island circuit. The car's spectacular. The track's spectacular. I think we're in for a treat this afternoon for this one. All right, let's have a look at the grid. The starting grid for the Monochrome GT4 Australia event. Brabham Love will start on pole from Love Motorsport. Then Quinn and Jackich for Thunder Buddies Racing start at a position number two. Method Motorsport lock out the second row. And we look back further to George Mediki, who will be starting out of position number five for the Mediki Motor Group. And he says that car is exceptionally quick. They just brought it out of the container on Tuesday. And here they are racing. Looking further back down the order, Quinn will start out of 13th. Maguire and Newman out of 14th. Bow back there in 15th. And the car's now starting to set up side by side with both BMW and Mercedes on the front row of the grid with a couple of Porsches in the mix as well as a Ford. So lots of different cars, lots of different makes at the front of this field. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, I guess it'll be a battle of the horsepower being a rolling start here. Different manufacturers, all got different strengths and weaknesses. So we've got Mercedes versus BMW off the front row here behind, uh, behind them. A couple of McLarens and then a very fast... GT4 Mustang on the third row of the grid. So it'll be uh, a drag race into turn one, no doubt. So they line up side by side through turn 12 here at the iconic Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. Red lights are on and we're in the hands of Sam Brabham, the 17. Waiting to go now, all cars staying neat and tidy and lights out. And away we're racing. George Medici looks to the inside of the third row and they've ended up in a pack race down to turn number one. Sam Brabham has the inside run as they make their way through. Nice and tidy. Look at George Mediki, the mover. He's up into fourth, heading down into turn two now. And Sam Brabham seems to be showing a clean set of heels to the field at the moment as they enter into turn two, courtesy of the racetalk.com drone cam. Flack and Quinn were side by side in both turns one and turn two, and they're going to be battling it out into the hairpin here. So watch how this unfolds. And now we've got Mediki up the outside of Quinn. So uh, pretty action-packed first lap here. Yeah, I was speaking to George a little earlier today, and he said that car is exceptionally quick, and they're just getting their head around it as he makes his way up the inside into Siberia. Gets covered off by Quinn. So it's Brabham, Flack, Quinn, George Mediki there in fourth. Lockie Manif in fifth, Nathan Morkham in sixth. Morkham was a big loser in that start. He's lost a couple of spots there. So the Method Motorsport McLaren just dropping back. But as we see the other McLaren from Method Motorsport fighting for the lead is on air over the Lukey Heights. Here we go. As we see the leaders still side by side. Yeah, Sam Brabham covered off the inside line, but that's given Flack the run up the inside. Turn he's got 11, it done. And he's able to get that move done through turn 11. Was... Try and make a bit of a gap through turn 12 as they come back onto the main straight again. 33 minutes remaining, plus one lap. That was a real assertive move there from Flack. He set him up across Lukey Heights, and he just took the biggest dive into 11. It looked like he almost caught Brabham napping, to be honest. So, um, yeah, Flack, he's got the hammer down, and he's getting out of here while it's on for second place here. Too wide into turn one. Mediki oh. around the outside in the big Mustang. Here we go. He's held on, and that'll give him the inside run into Southern Loop. So George Mediki in a brand new car that came out of the container last Tuesday. They've been working on this car, tweaking it up. He now sits in the top three. Wouldn't it be special if we could get this big Mustang on the podium, celebrating 60 years of Mustang here at the island. It's, uh, it looks great on track. There's a couple of Mustang owners that have been opposite us all day here on the main straight that will be cheering on George Mediki out of the Mediki Motor Group. Saw his old man down there as well on the headset down in pit lane. But your race leader, Flack, now fastest of all through the first sector. He's trying to break the back of Sam Brabham, who's under threat now from George Mediki. Yeah, Flack's got just done the first, uh, the fastest first sector of the race there. So he's got the, the clear air advantage. He's got the hammer down, and he's going to try and get a gap, try and get it, um, Sam Brabham out of that slipstream. And uh, it will be interesting to see here, because George Mediki looks super quick in that big Mustang. So... Maybe he's going to try and race up behind uh, Sam Brabham in the next couple of laps to try and get a pass done. 
bunching up a bit further back, though, isn't it? As we can see, Lockie Maneath and Nathan Morkham. Antonio Studi also out there. How good's a variety? You've got Porsche, you've got McLaren, you've got Mercedes, Mustang, BMW. Something here for everyone, which is really cool to see. Well, if you are a fan of GT racing, this is like baby GT, isn't it? It's so like a it's little warm-up for GT3 action that we've seen today, and we're going to see again tomorrow. So, uh, awesome, uh, awesome battles going on here. And, um, yeah, the racing's actually pretty tight. So when you've got so many different manufacturers, so many different ways of making the cars go fast, to actually have all these cars pretty compressed in this field and you know, roughly doing the same amount of lap time is actually pretty impressive. It was a long race. It was going to be an hour, but the action-packed schedule for the afternoon came about as a result of the, the incident that involved Ben Shoots earlier today on the main straight. And you can see the, the coolant that was put down in that Porsche race earlier. It shouldn't be to the detriment of the racing, though. It's well and truly off racing line. As they settle in now with Marcus Flack out in the lead from Sam Brabham, George Medici. see the top three now just starting to spread out a little bit. Flack has just opened up just over nearly a one and a half second lead here and Brabham in between Brabham and Mediki to be fair just got a similar buffer so um, be sure to see how we go as you mentioned still 30 odd minutes remaining in this race so as we get to next probably the next 10 minutes of the race we really start to see who works their tyres hard at the start who pushes to make a gap but you may pay a price later in the race as it goes on so um, the battle certainly isn't over yet. Not by any stretch of the imagination. So looking at a couple of movers up and down the order, Tim Lay has moved up one slot. So running in eighth position at the moment. Danny Studdard is uh, way back down the order. He's lost three spots off the start of this race. So sits in 11th now. Bucken that's made six spots as well. So that's uh, that's a pretty impressive start for Bucken there. And we've got John Bauer also in behind him making up a couple of spots as well. So, um, yeah, really cool to see John Bauer joining this GT4 field here this weekend. Obviously, it's a name that's so famous and well-known in Australian motorsport. And he's still going. He's still turning up to the racetrack. He's still got the race helmet on, which I personally love and really cool to see. Yeah, so to give you an idea as well of the race speed difference between these cars and GTs. We were talking about a 124 being a possibility in the GT race. Well, they're running around at 135s at the moment, 135.6, so they're about 10 seconds off the pace of the next step up into GT3. This race is settling down now with Marcus Flack, Sam Brabham and George Medici, still your top three. Let's check in with Greg Rust. Cam, I got a nice surprise when I arrived at the track here on Thursday. Fans that follow supercars on the Seven Network will remember Chris O'Toole's face from having worked at Ford Performance Racing and others. Great to see you as a part of this GT4 project. How's it going? Oh, it's fantastic, mate. It's, it's really good. Like, we got the car uh, Monday, 4 o'clock at the workshop. Started on it, and I've been thrashing at it ever since. And, uh for tomorrow's race on pole, so can't be happier. Great, great story. I mean, the thing that we're kind of proud of is the first one in the Southern Hemisphere. That pole that you just talked about is a is a first, you know, in a very special way for Ford globally, isn't it? Oh no, it hasn't happened before. So we're, we're really proud. Um, Andrew's put put together a fantastic crew, and uh, it's just great to be part of. Finally, George and Andrew are great to work with. Everything going okay here so far? Yeah, fantastic. Really, really happy. Really happy. Let's get back to it. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Great to hear from. Greg Rust down in lane. He'll be pounding the pavement down there with 27 minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Plus one lap. You can see George Medici on screen. We've spoken at length about him. And it's not just because of the Mustang celebrations, Todd. No, it's because he's exactly. doing a great job in the top three. He's doing an awesome job. As you can see, he's made up a couple positions since the start of the race. But he has got some pressure on here. So we did see a flying start from George. But... Maybe that big Mustang is working the tyres a little hard. Who knows? We'll find out in the next few laps. But uh, you can certainly see a bit of a battle pack starting to develop there. Ford is fighting over second, third, fourth, fifth. So, um, yeah, watch this space. Well, Marcus Flack is looking very good out in front at the moment. Sam Brabham also holding on quite strongly. But the battle pack's forming. Now, on screen it says Jack Hitch at the moment. But our timing monitors have it down as Ryder Quinn in position number four out on track. Lockie Maneath 
and Nathan Morecambe. Also still holding strong in the meantime. Let's check in with Sarah Bird down in pit lane. Down here with Rylan Gray, co-driver of the Ford Mustang. Rylan, your daddy is Jeremy Gray, very successful driver in his own right. How exciting is it for you to be here driving in his footsteps? Yeah, it's pretty exciting, you know, to debut the brand new Mustang as well. It's pretty cool to have some of the Ford guys here as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really positive with how the weekend's going so far and, yeah, can't wait to get in the car. And what's been the messaging as you've been prepping for today? What have you been really focusing on? Um, just focusing on building confidence each time and sort of improving the car. You know, it's, it's brand new to Australia and, yeah, I've just been clicking with George out there doing a fantastic job as well. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Now, your team's been telling us you've got a couple of minutes before you have to hop in, so we'll let you go. Thanks so much, Alan. Right, thank you. Great job there by Birdie Beetle down in pit lane. Looking forward to hearing more from her. And you can hear the AFL creeping in with some of that messaging. I love it, Todd Hazelwood. Bit of what is the messaging? It's, it has started to creep into motorsport as well, Todd. The way it's actually a lot more about messaging, what your focus for a weekend is, what your strengths and weaknesses at a track are. Is that what you've noticed also with your racing? You're starting to get a bit more pre professional, and I know you're a professional guy, but you understand what I mean, a bit more of the sports psychology coming into it. Oh, 100%. You know, people that, uh, that don't think motorsport's not a physical and mentally physical sport, you're kidding yourself. It's, it's, we talk about confidence and how you get that mindset right before you get in a race car. It's not about just being brave and driving fast and doing the best job you can. You've got to have confidence on your side. You've got to have belief in the car. You've got to have a, an understanding about what the setup is going to do for the car and how you manipulate your driving style to suit it. So there's so much that goes through the head. And obviously, at the top tier of Australian motorsport, you've got all that external pressure that you put on yourself as a driver because you want to perform. You want to do a good job for your team, your sponsors, and yourself, obviously. But when you're racing for your career and you're trying to show people what you're capable of, yeah. the pressure's on. So how you manage all those things is, uh, is a massive thing in our industry. And uh, a lot of drivers are using performance coaches these days. In commentary, we use them as well. And our, uh, our performance coach is Greg Rust. Let's check you in. You are kidding. Thank you, Cam. Uh, this is someone that Todd Hazelwood will know acutely because normally he's racing in the Trans Ams. Um, Tom Heyman, who did an amazing job at Queensland Raceway last year. But this is a change of scene for you. How are you enjoying it? Yes, uh, it's been pretty awesome so far. We obviously did the 12 hour with uh, Method at, um, a couple of months ago. So, yeah, we had a good result there and it's going pretty good so far. So, it's pretty hard. What's the play here? You helmet it up, you're ready to go, and uh, the plan is obviously to bring it home. Do you have to be mindful of the new surface here so far this weekend and just, just look after it to the finish? Yeah, I'm sure that'll be the game plan getting in the car, but um, we'll see how it goes throughout my stint. So I hope that's not too far away. You're enjoying these new wheels, aren't you? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Pretty <laughs> there you go. Back to you guys. Cheers. Yeah, enjoy them. They should. These cars are immaculate. Great to see them out for their first race of the year. We saw one of them uh, down in Tasmania, at Race Tasmania event, just preparing for this weekend and the beginning of their championship. Todd, have you put your hand up to have a steer of one of these yet? I'd love to. I might, I might uh, go knock on Madiki's door and try and get a ride in that Mustang because I'm a not going to lie, bit of a four man at heart, and that <laughs> thing looks pretty awesome on track. So you can actually see in those last couple of laps when we were talking to Rusty there that Madiki actually got the move done on Brabham, and now we're actually seeing another pass going to turn one. Action pack here. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go with that. That's a big move. The big BMW. It looks massive compared to that Mercedes, doesn't it? It's actually quite interesting how all the different shapes and sizes we got. You know, two. You know, there's still a two door sports car, but just the. Uh, yeah, that's the, the G82. There's two different types of body style for the BMW, the F82 and the G82. The majority of cars in this field are the G82, which is that car you saw of Ryder, Quinn and Jack Itch making, down, making their way down to turn number four. But as you mentioned before, George Medici now in his Mustang makes his way up to Siberia. Big gap, though. 3.7 seconds he's going to have to find if he's going to get anywhere near Marcus Flack. Pit stops are upcoming though. So we saw a few of the drivers with their helmets on. And as we know, when there's pit stops involved in a race, the race is certainly not over because generally there's more action in pit lane than what there is out on track. And if it's anything to go by what's happening out on track, we're going to be in for a treat for the back half of this race. So don't go away. I think this race is just warming up. Yeah, it's really interesting when you, you mentioned that as well because pit lane at Phillip Island is so narrow compared to some of the other uh, pit lanes we go to around Australia. You compare it to one of the more modern and new ones at the bend and it feels like you could almost have a cricket pitch of width down there, whereas we're looking at, you know, two cars width at its probably widest point. 
Yeah, exactly. And the way they set up the pits, every car or every every um, every team, I should say, in GT4, they're all set, separated right behind each other. So, yeah, if, even just that little bit of time, if you have to swing in front of another car in front of your pit bay, that's another half a second to a second. And if we look at the margins out on the circuit now, you could throw a blanket over the, the guys between second and fourth. There was a little bit of a move there. Looks like Nathan Morecambe threw on Lockie Maneef. That was into turn two. I wonder if there was contact. It looked like he just pushed him out of the way. I, uh, I got napping there. I wasn't actually looking at the screen no, to that's see what right. happened. But, um, yeah, Morecambe got right. through on the entry to turn two. He almost pushed him out of the way. You can see they're making their way through turn number four now. And Sam Brabham really struggling with his Mercedes. And right behind him, Nathan Morecambe now sits. And in the Porsche, currently in sixth place is Lockie Maneef. We know that McLaren's fast. You know, that was uh, on the start of the race on the second row, and he got shuffled out on that first lap. But uh, that Method Motorsports McLaren, you can see it actually racing up behind Brabham here now. And if I was Morecambe, he's actually looking to go up the inside into Lukey Heights, which is a tricky spot to do. Now, what he wants to do is try and set him up, set himself up for a pass and try and get up the inside. He hasn't... A little bit defensive there by Brabham, which is fine. He's allowed to do that. But this race certainly isn't over. We've got some action. So Mark Griffith has come in for his pit stop. Zoe Woods also in for a pit stop right now. Pit window is open. 20 minutes, 21 seconds, and one lap remaining in this first race for the Monochrome GT4 Australia Championship. We make our way down pit lane. I'll probably get slaughtered by a few Motorsport Australia aficionados and say it's actually a series, Cameron. And um, it was interesting watching that pit stop there. We actually saw the pit crew bleeding air out of the tyres. So you might be wondering, why are they bleeding air out of the tyres in a pit stop? Well, they're not changing their tyres. They're keeping the same tyres on the car, but bleeding that hot air out, try and get it back to that start pressure. And then essentially that next into the race, the pressures will then build up to the optimum pressure again. So trying to get more life out of the same set of tyres rather than trying to change tyres in a pit stop. So our race leaders are in the pits now. Marcus Flack, George Medici both in. Ryder Quinn stayed out on track. Sam Brabham also stayed out on track. So we'll watch for the pit stops in the background. Look, plenty of action out on track at the moment, though, as Morecambe through on Sam Brabham and Lockie Maneef trying to go with him. Is that Antonio Astuti also buying into the back of the battle? And that'll start to bring... Tim Lay and Josh Bucken up 11 spots into the top seven. Fantastic job by Bucken. 11 spots in this field is uh, a really nice job. So um, it's going to be fascinating to see here because we've got some battle packs and then we're going to have drivers jumping into a car, onto a hot track, hot cars, into a battle pack. So it's going to be interesting to see, obviously, how this all transpires as we grab him getting shuffled back again. So he clearly must be struggling for a little bit of longevity with that tire life, but... It, the pass isn't over there as uh, we see Brabham back up the inside into the last corner. Fast part of the section through the corner here. So we see him fighting, trying to hang on for a position. For those of you watching on, on Seven Sport, big move here, Lockie Maneef around the outside. It'll be at turn one, the long way around. No, able to hold on. Lockie Maneef as George Medici now. Well, no, George Medici's out of the car, I should mention. And this is a change of driver and we'll be back out on track very shortly. We'll continue to watch this battle. The 27 of Antonio Astuti, he did get around Lockie Maneef shortly. I got the cars confused for just a second, but Lockie Maneef holding on, making our way down through turn number three. I'm liking the look of the Mustang Todd, I must admit. And I also caught you, I was just about to make the point, you're in one of the best commentary vantage points in the country. And you can't help but be caught out looking around the circuit from up here, can you? No, exactly. It's, uh, it's a really cool vantage point. As you, for those wondering, we basically got a bird's eye view of the whole circuit. And I'm basically walking around in circles, watching the action unfold around me, which is pretty cool. You don't normally get to have that sort of opportunity at racetracks. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool being up here in the commentary box and certainly getting a different perspective out on the racetrack, which is uh, always a nice day at the office. He's always also a bit antsy. I think he'd rather be out there as we've got more in the pits. Tim Lay, Jamie Augustine also in, and Maguire also. So Jamie Augustine will be handing over to Peter Lawrence. As we can see, the, the pit crew there just preparing to see. There were a couple of pieces of inserts. So obviously the unique thing with different drivers trying to get the seat padding right is uh, no driver's ever the same. We always have shorter legs or bigger torsos or you know, all those little things. You have a bit of a... Oh, we got damage here. Big damage on... That's... Uh, that's Antonio Astuti. That's... Uh, 
On standby, please. So I think we will Thank keep an eye out for race control. You can hear them in the background. Let's watch the replay here. Antonio Astuti, he's overcooked it into the braking for pit lane and oh. straight in the back of Lockie Maneef. Big contact. That was at the control line coming into pit lane. Now he's well and truly off the track, but there is debris on the pit entry road. As the 24 switches over driver. And you may be thinking, how did that happen? But uh, it's such a fast entry into pit lane on the circuit. You're almost plucking fourth gear before you enter into pit lane. So that closing speed has clearly caught him out. And um, yeah, big damage. So he'll be out for the rest of this race. And what will be fascinating to see, I think the Lockie Maneef car has actually stopped in pit lane. Um, in the fast lane, stopped. So he's got the hazards on. We see the pit crew members. So we're actually watching from the commentary tower here getting pushed down pit lane. So yeah, clearly that's a shame because Maneef is actually starting to look like he had some pace there to burn. And um, it looks like that damage has put him out. So we're just making our way back out on track at the moment. As that's Quinn at the wheel. I know it says Jack. It's making his way back in. This will be the first time race control gets a chance to see one of the cars come past the Antonio Astuti entry. Still slows it at the control line. There is Astuti. He gets his way onto the grass to get away from the debris as well. That's probably, probably back into not pit a bad lane. thing to do because uh, last thing you want to do is drive any, any over debris because you don't want to get a puncture in a, in a hot tyre because... It's so easy to puncture a tyre when you've got hot, greasy tyres. So Sam Brabham also back in, Josh Bucken back in. And they're making their way down for their pit stops. Send the action of plenty here. I don't know where to look at the moment. We've got, we've got action on track in pit lane. But, All right. Uh, yeah. To so take us through some of these pit stops, let's check in with Chris Dubbs. Thank you. It is all happening down here at the moment, that's for sure. We've got all our different... Uh, class of drivers remember now you may be able to see at the moment we've got uh, the icon that is Glenn Seaton now he's flagging down his man here who is Jake Camilleri now this is a silver car he's a driver on his own now look Aaron Seaton son of Glenn former Trans Am driver a guy we know well single driver but what they're doing for the silver class they're making him get out of the car even though he's a single driver stand back from the car and get back into the car. So this idea is to replicate what would happen for someone who has a co-driver. So that the a guy like Jake can't just sit in the car relaxing, having a great time, waiting for his pit stop uh, to finish. They're trying to replicate the intensity that it takes to reconnect a driver on a driver change and what that does to your adrenaline and what it does to your heart rate when you're getting back into the car to go racing. So if you're wondering why that happened, that is the story behind it. Thank you very much, Chris Dubbs. And there is a really good point because what we've traditionally th seen in Australian GT racing is the single driver gets to sit in the car, take a drink, as you suggested, make sure their belts are continue to be nice and tight. It doesn't have that same level of uh, angst, anxiety, stress that you do when you're a driver hopping into a car, which you know all too well, Todd Hazelwood. Yeah, the, the, I'll tell you what, there's nothing more than getting your heart in the mouth like a driver change because you see a car coming down the lane, that adrenaline's already up and you're trying to do it as fast as you can because you don't want to lose any time in the pits because as we mentioned, it's so easy to make a mistake in the pits and all it takes is to struggle trying to get a lap belt on or you can't get the window up properly. That one little mistake can be massively cost, costly on a, on a racetrack. 13 minutes, one lap remaining in this first race for the Monochrome GT4 Australia Series. Oh. They're putting on a show for us today. Unfortunately for Lockie Maneef, his day is done. Did he get back out? Antonio Studi certainly didn't. There was significant damage to the rear ends of the Porsche. Just watching the battle at the front here. So we've got Heyman. He's got a two-second advantage over Gray in, in that uh, Medici Motorsport Mustang. I just wonder if that that is start, just starting to tighten up just a little bit. I've just been watching the timing screen, and Gray, he's actually got the yeah, he's, fastest lap of the race. He so there was you go. Quickest in his session when it was the secondary drivers at the wheel. It's Ryland Gray. So there's still plenty of time left in this race. So this uh, this could certainly well. This is what I was up. alluding to, Todd Hazelwood, because when I was talking to the team down at uh, Mediki Motorsport or the Motor Group, they were saying that Ryland Gray is exceptionally quick in the car to the point where he was actually quicker than George Medici as well. So at the wheel here, he's making short work of it. It's now 1.9 seconds a gap. Leveled out a bit in that middle sector. But it's Heyman from Gray and Brian now. Jackage at the wheel. 
Then Love in fifth and Tim Lay. He remains at the wheel in the AM class car. The leader in the AM class. He's in six outright as Tim Lay now moves up into the top five. We continue to wind down the clock. 11 and a half minutes plus one lap remaining. Let's check in with Sarah Bird. Sam Brevin, it's been a while since you've been in the car. How did it feel being back in there? Oh, look, last year was a mixed program for me and I spent nearly a year out of the seat. So to be back here with the team, love racing and, you know, we've got a two-car operation. But for me personally, just to come back and just be driving again, to be honest with you, the consistency of being in the car is so important. And, you know, without Bailey and Robert, I wouldn't be racing this year probably. So I'm very grateful to them. And it's a good day for a great cohort out here as well. Obviously, there's a lot of family history in racing for you. How much does that mean to you to be back here and, and doing what you love and your family loves? Oh, it's it's amazing. You know, my dad came over and my mum for the Grand Prix earlier this year and they came to a test day that we were doing and they were just so proud. And, you know, I've, I moved over here. I wasn't racing. Or I just wanted a change in, in, in my life. And I fell in love with Melbourne and, and Australia. And I'm just grateful to be in this position to be able to drive in cars in a place that I love. Thanks very much. We're very happy to have you here in Victoria. We'll head back to Rusty now. Sarah, thank you. Just like Sam, there is a, diver a diverse array of drivers up and down this pit lane. This guy here, Eddie Maguire, just last weekend on 7 Plus, you would have seen at the wheel of a Skoda in the Australian Rally Championship. Different field of play this weekend for you. How are you enjoying it? Yeah, completely different last weekend, but now I've got a, a really big learning curve here. I think I need to stop driving like a gravel rally driver and start <laughs> learning a few of these uh, circuit racing techniques. I think that's my problem, but yeah, great circuit. I've never been around here. I've done no next to no circuit racing. So, um, yeah, but it's so much fun out there. It was great. Now, you had a little lesson, I think, early on. Were you pushed wide by someone, or what happened there? Yeah, t turn one at the start of the race, I got pushed off the outside. So that was that was quite interesting, and uh, I managed to claw back those paces at those spots that I lost. But, um, yeah, no, the rest of the rest of my, my session was uh, was pretty good. It was good. Awesome. There he is, and uh, great to have you as a part of it this weekend. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Great work from the team down in pit lane, and the battle continues out on track. Nine minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Now, Todd... Just got a message in from one of my spotters down in pit lane while they were getting those awesome pit stop, pit area interviews there. Um, there's just a couple of people questioning whether a few of the teams down in pit lane had actually achieved their required 120 second stop. So I'm going to put a bit of a disclaimer and we'll check the results overnight to see if anything comes of that. But they did, were required to have a essentially two minute stop. We make our way down to turn four. Big move being put on, not able to get the position done. It's a battle for the lead. Sorry, not the lead. Now we're at the battle for the lead. I tell you what, this is going to be a battle. I tell you what, uh, Gray has certainly raced up the back of Heyman there. So Gray's got the hammer down. There's still plenty of time left in this race to get a pass done. So really cool to see after all this time. We've, we've had quite a decent stint of racing here. We've had pit stops. The racing still action-packed at the front. And I'll tell you what, isn't that a sight? McLaren first Mustang. Something we haven't heard for a while, I reckon. It's, uh, that rolls off the tongue pretty nicely. And but uh, it's a battle into Turn 1. Here I we go. I think it's about to be a Mustang about to take the lead. So we continue to stay with this battle through Turn 1. Roland Gray looks to the inside through Turn 1. Heyman holds him out. He'll have the advantage through the very fast double apex southern loop corner. But then... Watch the Mustang stretch its legs. He'll look to get the inside run through three. But that'll put him in the outside position for turn four. A bit of racecraft going on. Covers off down into turn four. But that'll compromise the run of the Mustang on exit. The McLaren fights back, but he's not able to go with him. And we have a new race leader with seven minutes, 49 seconds remaining in one lap. And it's the Mediki Motor Group. Mustang here on a semi-historic weekend. Great to have the support of Ford Mustang, 60 years old. What a pass, what a move. That's a big fast corner there in the Mustang going through turn three. But I reckon the coolest thing in that whole shot was watching Gray's eyes. You could see that he had one eye in the mirror, one eye to his right, one behind, trying to work out where Heyman was in that McLaren. So uh, Really good car placement. He pulled that pass off really nicely, covered it off, protected the line into turn four. And now let's watch him stretch his legs. As we already see, he's already got about a three-tenths advantage after already getting that pass done. Now he's going to have the hammer down for the next seven minutes. But can we see Heyman fight back? Now he's going to be tucked up behind him. He's got a bit of a slipstream behind Gray. So the fight for the lead may not be over just yet. 
tell you what, that Mustang, that does sound nice coming through the speakers. It's, uh, look at the conditions they've got. These, Todd, and I know you've cut just a couple of laps of this circuit. These are some of the best moments you have on a racetrack, particularly for Ryland Gray, who's out in the lead at the moment, leading a race at Phillip Island. The sun's just starting to set, relatively low ambient. Track condition looks pretty good in most parts, other than exit of turn four. Yeah, a little bit of marbles offline, but I tell you what, every time you come to this place at Phillip Island, the track is always displayed and presented so well. The grass looks green. We've got the, we've got the water in the background, just a magnificent backdrop and uh, beautiful place to have a racetrack. It's, uh, it's one of those circuits that always puts a smile on your face. You always feel like you're getting up on the wheel. So many fast flowing corners and uh, you know, the grip that we're getting from this new surface here at Phillip Island is truly spectacular and it's, it's a driver's dream to be honest. And a driver that's cut more than a handful of laps around here and also quite familiar with Ford is John Bow. He's with Chris Dubbs. Thank you very much. He doesn't need a lot of introduction, does he? But he's adding just another notch to the belt. Uh, monochrome GT Racing, just adding that to the collection, JB. How yeah, you finding it? Just another it? category, mate, but uh, it's a terrific category of racing. I mean, it's very new to me, but it's uh, the cars are great fun to drive. The, the competition's good. We, we started a bit far back for uh, qualifying reasons, but so to get a good result, but it's terrific racing. The cars are very even. There's, there's not much in any of it, and I had uh, quite a battle with Zoe Woods. I didn't know it was Zoe Woods, but uh, she drove really well, you know, so, so it's fun, really fun. And they're great cars, aren't they? They are cool cars. There's such a great, diverse range out there. Such, such a, a diversity. Some are a bit quicker on the straight, some are better on the brakes. So you get a, a, an ebb and flow, which is really good. Um, yeah, I, I think it's fantastic, and you've got to see 18 cars for the first meeting. It really looks good for the future. I'm glad to be in it, to be honest, for the Randall Racing, which is the Lawrence family, and they're awesome people. And Jacob, it's a mentoring role as well. It's about developing him and, and his capabilities. How's he going? He's going great. He's going really good. We've had a bugger of a, a lead-up to it with weather and stuff, but so's everyone else. We're all new to it, so we're going good. So the old Chow for now tour from last year, that was for TCM, but for here we've got you in GT4 and we're loving it, we're looking forward to seeing yeah, you. Yeah, I might have to do another Chow for <laughs> now soon or something, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Good on you, Joe, mate. Thanks, Great to see you. Thanks, mate. He's not retiring. He's not quitting Todd Hazelwood. We know JB loves his motorsport, so he did leave Touring Car Masters as we watch some of our cars going around out on track at the moment. I just want to add, Todd, we've got a couple of pit lane penalties Looks like fighting back now at the front is Heyman on Gray, but the 19 and the 101. So Mark Griffith and Tony Quinn have got pit lane drive-through penalties for exceeding the pit lane speed limits. It's, uh, that's going to get him in trouble, and that's a shame because they're both having a pretty solid race there, both in 9th and 11th at the moment. So, um, yeah, that'll drop this him way back. This is back on here. Rylan Gray's battle, his tyres have gone away from him. Sorry to jump on you there, Todd. We're three and a half minutes away from the race finish. Rylan Gray's getting caught up by traffic. And this has brought the McLaren back into the battle. So Rylan Gray, we thought he might drive off into the sunset. But the race continues down to turn number four. He covers off. That tells you where he's at. He's getting defensive down into turn four. Yeah, exactly. The pressure's on. And I know he got a little bit of traffic coming over Lukey Heights in the previous lap. So I do wonder if that's how... Heyman raced up behind him, but uh, hey, we've got a battle on for the lead. Three lap, uh, three minutes to go in this race. It's not over yet, so can Heyman get a late race pace, late race pass done? Um, it'll be fascinating to see, so um, yeah, bring it on. So through Hayshed, it'll be advantage McLaren up over the top of Lukey Heights as Tony Quinn comes in to serve his pit lane infringement penalty. Up over the top, the McLaren gets racy. But Rylan Gray looked a bit more confident. He's, he parked it not normally where you'd go. He has to open up turn 11 to give himself a run. The McLaren able to stay skinny on entry at 11. And it's interesting, just what John Bow said before, the strengths and weaknesses of these cars up and down this field. As you can see, the big Mustang, it has to open up the corner and use his advantage down the straight. It's certainly got really good straight line handling the Mustang, whereas the McLaren certainly a lot more nimble. It's got better better cornering and probably better, a little bit braking stability just with the nature of the car. But um, as you can see, the straight line speed of that Mustang is super impressive. So, um, yeah, so we just haven't seen though, how this category performs over the longer race distance, how the tyres hold on. 
particularly in the heavier Mustang. It's all good in a straight line, but under two minutes and one lap remaining. The McLaren hasn't gone away. The gap remains at six tenths of a second between the two of them. Now, as we talk about managing the tyres, when you've got a big car like a Mustang, it's a lot of energy going through the tyre. Well, you've got all that horsepower and it's talking up the, the loaded wheel. And when you've got such a grippy surface, it actually starts to separate the tyre from the carcass. So you actually get what we call like blistering of the tyre. Not so much tyre wear, but blistering. So it literally blows the tread off eventually over a race distance. So um, that's one thing that I'm sure the whole team at Badiki Motor Group are managing and, and certainly aware of having this, a car with so much horsepower and, and probably a little bit more weight. But as you can see, Rylan Gray, he's got that thing twitching coming into Lukey Heights. So he's not, he's not backing off. He doesn't want to lose this race so late in the piece, that's for sure. So he's doing everything he can so we'll to manage this race. Two more laps remaining in this one. So they'll get to the chequered flag before it counts out. So two laps remaining. It's a Mustang from a McLaren. And you must give massive credit to Tim Leahy, an AM driver, currently sitting third outright, and he's on PB times as well as he continues around in this race. Yeah, exactly. That's a uh, good race for him as well. So... Um Plenty of movers and shakers in this race, which is Gen a really Genuine unique Genuine question, thing. though. How does Tim Leahy get classed as an amateur driver? He's done a few laps under his belt now, I'd say. So I'm um, just getting a bit more experience. So I'm not quite sure how the rules work he's, with GT4. But, he's uh, raced all sorts of things. One of the good mates of <laughs> Will Davison. He's been a stalwart in production car racing. Very successful driver, particularly in categories like a similar or relatively equivalent to GT4. As we set off on the last lap and a half of this race. Race one for the Monochrome GT Australia Series. Looks like it's uh, going to be great Gray's way today. But um, as we spoke about before, if he can get this win done, what a historic moment, not only for the team and for Ford, but also for this event. We are celebrating 60 years of Ford Mustang here at the island. As we mentioned, we've got an amazing display of some really cool Mustangs down the front straight here. So um, if he can get it done, I think there's going to be a lot of happy faces up and down pit lane today. Just getting word in. It's actually Tim Lay's birthday tomorrow. 49 years old, or 49 years young, yeah. as he'll tell you. That's it. All over it, Todd. And now look at this. The McLaren's closer again. So we're about to start the last lap of this race. It's a slightly shortened race. But nonetheless, the McLaren hasn't given up. Heyman's done a great job. And I think what one thing we've seen with today's race, we're in for a fascinating battle tomorrow. If we have a longer race tomorrow, maybe the McLaren can look after his tyres a bit better. So, you know, although it looks like, obviously, Gray's put a spectacular performance in, and George too, mind you. They've both, done a, both driven a fantastic race. So um, as we go on tomorrow's race, though, maybe that tyre wear might be a little bit more and um, we might see a change of position for the race. But it's certainly looking like if he can get through this lap traffic, now this is the worst feeling as a race leader. It's the last lap. He's got the flashes on. You go, hey, mate, get he out has of the it, way. He hasn't moved out of the way. What you request, though, normally is stay on the racing line. Don't do anything different. And unfortunately, now the McLaren's caught him at the worst part. It's been chopped up. That should be it. It's enough of a gap now for the Mustang as he makes his way through turn six. Half race distance, or half lap distance, I should say. And sets off with only a few corners remaining. A little bit of breathing space there for Gray now. So he can take a deep breath as he goes through Hayshev for the final time. And he can probably just have a little bit of reserve as he gets back onto the brake pedal here, approaching Lukey Heights. So um, as a driver now, he's just got to get through the next couple of corners and a race win is within sight, which is awesome to see. This is the last corner you worry about. And he pinched a brake as he ran skinny. But he's got enough breathing space now. They got the car on Tuesday out of the container. They've rebuilt parts of it. The Mediki Motor Group, headed up by Andrew Mediki, the main driver, George Mediki, and the young Rylan Gray at the wheel of the Ford Mustang wins for the first time in the 2024 Monochrome GT4 Australia Series. And it's advantage Ford. Fantastic race. I really enjoyed it. That Lubramax Mustang was absolutely flying from the get-go from lap one. As you mentioned, both George and Gray did a spectacular job. Good pit stop. But also a big shout-out to the Method Motorsports uh, of the, the second McLaren there. So, um, solid day for their team, and I'm sure they'll have a bit of redemption for tomorrow. Heyman threw in second. Tim Leahy, the first of our amateur drivers 
He also finished third outright for that race. Brian comes across the line in fourth and Camilleri will be there in fifth very shortly. So there it is, the official race results for the Monochrome GT4 Australia Series. Race number one, Mediki Gern Gray for Mediki Motor Group take out the win. McLaren in second for Marcus Flack and Heyman for Method Motorsport there. Tim Lay, he finished in third in his Alfa Romeo. Morecambe and Bryant for Method Motorsport there in fourth. The Mercedes of Camilleri and then Brabham and Love were in fifth and sixth. Then Quinn and Jackich in seventh. Bucken and you and great job by Josh Bucken. He put that into contention. Further down the order, we see Maguire and Newman there in 11th. Tony Quinn with that pit lane infringement with speeding. He finished back in 13th. Let's have a look at some of the highlights from the first race for the 2024 Monochrome GT4 Australia Series. And it was a rolling start and a great start by Sam Brabham, who led early. But then came Marcus Flack in his McLaren. George Medici got up into third quite quickly. And the battle raged throughout. George Medici was pushing hard to put themselves into contention. And this was that little move that I saw from Nathan Morecambe down at turn two on Lockie Manith. But this is the big moment that we talked about when Antonio Studi ran into the back of Lockie Manith as they made their way into pit lane. Then it was Rylan Gray at the wheel of the Medici Motor Group Ford Mustang who was able to get the job done down into turn four on Tom Heyman who'd taken over from Marcus Flack at that point of the race. And he went unheaded. The McLaren stayed in the mix. But whenever they got to those straights, the straight line advantage of the Ford Mustang proved to be too good. And the sun starts to set on the beautiful day's racing here at Phillip Island. Thank you very much, Todd Hazelwood. We'll see you tomorrow out on track and maybe in the box. But as for us up here in commentary, that's our day done. Let's check in with Rusty and Chris Stubbs. Cam Todd, well done. Great job by Todd in the uh, in the commentary hey. there for TCR as well. He's a uh, he's a natural, isn't he? What a day we've had here at Phillip Island. Stubbs in. It's wet the appetite for tomorrow, really, hasn't oh, it? Hasn't it? What? And I tell you what, it's been a typical Phillip Island day, hasn't it? We had a bit of weather come through and interrupt things. We had drivers absolutely pushing the limits and some coming unstuck. So a shout out, of course, to our officials that were able to keep us racing today because GT World Challenge that was a big hit. It caused a delay. Well done to everyone reshuffling the schedule and keeping us on there, hey? So the work is happening with those GT3 cars as we speak. A bit of work will happen overnight in monochrome GT4. What a start to the season we've enjoyed there. The big thumbs up from George Medici as he walks past us here in the lane. We are on air tomorrow morning from 10, 10 a.m. on 7+. Plus. What a schedule we've got to uh, to bring you tomorrow. The racing will be back-to-back. -back. We're on seven, mate, throughout the course of the afternoon as well. That pretty much wraps up a really good Saturday. Here we uh, we got a little wet. It dried out. We got some good racing, yeah. didn't we? And what a way to finish off with a win for a Mustang when we are here at the Ford Mustang 60 Years Race Phillip Island. That is fitting, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. So uh, well done to all of those enthusiasts who came out here today and brought those Mustangs for us. And fittingly, the final one of the day on the 60th anniversary of the Ford Mustang wins in GT4. Great story, that one. We'll be back tomorrow. Bye for now, everyone.